Welcome, Lord Seekers, to episode two of the Lower Levels. And yes, we have a Lower Level shirt on. Uh, we're debuting it on this episode, so I hope you guys uh, like it. It's, it's it's fairly simple, exactly how I like it. I don't want some Amstrad logo out there. Uh, I've always enjoyed the way this one looks since uh, we had it on Twitch back in the day. Um, I want to start these podcasts out with a quote. And I know I missed it on the first uh, debut episode, but uh, today's quote, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. And I think that's really cool for Star Wars fans because the cave in Dagobah, right? Um, Luke was afraid to go in the cave. And he says, you know, should I take should I take my blaster and lightsaber uh, in there? And Yoda pretty much guides him in there and he ends up facing um, a vision of Vader. And when he destroys him, it, he sees himself, right? So basically saying... That if you're not careful, you too can follow the path of your father, and you can and you can follow the dark side. And, and Yoda's been in that cave before, and Kylo Ren has also been in that cave before. I've made YouTube videos about that. Um, so shameless plug about my own YouTube channel. Just go back and check those videos out. Um, and yeah, so just try to think about that. You know, what is what is the cave that you fit in, or what's holding you back in life? Right. So go. Go figure it out and then get after it. Uh, the next thing I want to know and post in the comments below, do you guys want music in the background? Is that, is that something you do in a podcast? If you're, if you're a solo artist, you know, do you, do you want music in the background? If you do, just let me know and I'll start looking for some music and we'll post back there. Uh, if my lovely voice isn't enough, uh, star Wars celebration, Europe 2023 is this weekend it's currently going on there's one more day maybe two they might go to monday i don't know but some big news um the biggest one I, I well i don't know if it's the biggest one but the one that's getting the most attention is the ahsoka trailer i've already made several videos on this so please i'm gonna keep referring to that you know go back and watch these videos i, I put a lot of effort into them and i think you'll enjoy them too so if you're listening into the podcast, then you're definitely going to want to watch these videos. Uh, but we're going to break it down again. The video or the trailer, the teaser trailer, shows Ahsoka walking through this ancient Jedi temple, I guess you could say, um, a structure. And she looks to be searching for something. So she uses her move that Anakin taught her. If you guys remember in the Clone Wars, when Anakin is just blasting her, with the stun guns, with with the clone troopers, her and Rex is doing, it and then she's training. Well, she learns these moves that ends up saving her from Rex, and she uses her lightsabers to cut through metal. Ends up saving her life against Rex. Well, she does this, and she enters this structure, and on her way out, she's um, ambushed by three Magna guards. And I did make a mistake on the breakdown trailer i said that they were from fallen order but they were actually from revenge of the sith they're they they're the magna guards that grievous basically has protecting him and now thrawn has them a part of his seventh fleet okay um in the mandalorian season two episode called the jedi you can see these uh, magna guards with the emblem on their shoulder the seventh fleet emblem and that's when we first started knowing Thrawn was coming back. And then at the end of the episode, Ahsoka, of course, asked, you know, where is Thrawn? And that's when the big bad for the Disney show verse uh, was revealed. The Thanos, right? Thrawn is Thanos. And in the trailer, we get to see another big bad. Someone we don't even know. We've never even met this antagonist before. His name's Balin Skull. And he has an apprentice called Shin Hati, or Haiti, sorry, Shin Haiti. And it's cool because their last names are from Norse mythology, which I made a video about that today. So go check that out. Um, but basically, the two wolves are always chasing the sun and the moon. And during Ragnarok, when the earth is finally being destroyed, they finally catch their prey and they devour the sun and the moon, the two wolves together. So Dave Filoni has created these characters and he's named them on purpose. So what can we what can we think about that the two would be after? What is their sun and the moon? Like what what could that what could that be? Right? 
and I think Thrawn is Ragnarok. And when Thrawn comes to devour the Earth, aka the galaxy, the Star Wars galaxy, they're going to get what they want, which is the sun and the moon. But what is it? And that's the that's the key. Are they using Thrawn for Ragnarok? And at what point will they betray him to get what they want? Because they're, they're going to have to. Thrawn isn't just going to allow them these opportunities and gifts um, without some type of reward. And, you know, what does is, what is Thrawn want out of them? Maybe it's, maybe it's Ahsoka. Who knows? Um, and we're going to get into, you know, why Ahsoka is so she's she's powerful but first i want to get to the ghost crew we've seen the rest we got zeb and a mandalorian and now we have the rest of the ghost crew harrison doula sabine wren chopper uh ezra bridger we, we we we've gotten them all now and, and yeah if you didn't see ezra bridger is a hologram in the in the trailer i'm sure if you watch the trailer 27 times like i did you definitely saw him and he's older in that hologram which is weird but maybe just technology in Star Wars allows him to age a little bit <clears throat> for the hologram purposes. But it looks like Sabine is looking at him like he's a memory. Like he still is yet to be found. So, and if you notice at the end of the Rebels series, Ahsoka appears to Sabine on the same pillar that's in the trailer. The only difference is she's not wearing white robes. So I don't know where these white robes come into play. Maybe they will soon. Um, and then another thing to note, Disney's really good about not spoiling in the, tr in the teaser trailers. So I'm pretty sure we only seen the first two to three episodes of the season in, in that trailer. Um, but yeah, the ghost crew's back. Hera's, they all look good. Hera looks good. Sabine looks good. Chopper looks great. Um, of course we already seen Zeb and he looks amazing in the Mandalorian and I hope he makes an appearance in Ahsoka too so that they can get the whole gang back together, but they are going to play the gap that Ahsoka needs to bring in the new Republic because if, if say Ahsoka finds Thrawn, what is she going to do? She's got a, there's, that's a, she has Thrawn, she has Dark Jedi running around, she has Sith Inquisitors still after her and, um, She'll, she'll have thousands and thousands of stormtroopers to fight. She can't do it alone. So I believe that, and, and we're going we're gonna to get into this. Um, we'll have to pause this segment until we segue into the, the movie announcements that we got at Celebration. Um, but she's going to need all she can handle. And I'll explain basically how this is all going to work out as we get closer to the end of the podcast. Um, well, you have Balin, the, 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 the new antagonist who from listening to the the panels he's a survivor of order 66 and he has located a force user in his new apprentice shin and if you look closely in the the pictures in the trailer she's got padawan braid so it's cool he's still even though he appears to be a dark jedi he is still taking those values that he had that's why the saber's orange right I don't really care for the bleeding kyber crystal stuff in canon, but um, that's why it's not red, right? He's still following the values of the Jedi. Why would she have, there, she has a Padawan braid, but so I, w I wouldn't, and he doesn't, he has a stoic demeanor. He's not giving off that he's this evil character. Kylo Ren looks like he's, he's pissed off all the time, right? Darth Vader, you just know he's an angry dude. I didn't get that thought from Balin. Balin seems like he's on a mission and he believes in his mission. And he's highly skilled. And with that, he says a war is coming and um, and people are going to gain power. Meaning, to me, good thing I put that cap on. Um, meaning to me um, that he's after the power, right? Um, and maybe he wants the control. Maybe he sees another way Maybe, maybe he doesn't believe in the Empire and the New Republic. Maybe he sees his own way in controlling the galaxy. I think these two characters are going to be awesome. I think they're going to play a very big role in Ahsoka. And when we get to 
the Soka portion of the trailer, you know, she's after the same thing that he is. They, they end up in this room that looks like a star map. Everybody keeps saying, it's the world between worlds. Is the world be if that's the world between worlds, we failed. That don't look nothing like the world between worlds. Why would they, why would they design the world between worlds to look like that? All these, there, there's hundreds of clickbait YouTubers out there saying it's a world between worlds. It's not. Guys, it's a star map. It looks like a star room, right? It's got, it's a, you walk in, it's, it's got this huge ass map. Like they have one in New York City at the, at the, uh, the science museum. <laughs> Come on. Um, so with that, uh, what's the map hold? It, it's, it's going to hold the location of Thrawn's remnant empire, right? Uh, well, why, why would he leave these clues behind so he somebody can find him? Well, one, he's Thrawn. He likes to play mind games, right? He kind of expects you to find this uh, these clues to find him, right? Luke did it too. Right? Luke, Luke, I'm I'm going. I'm on exile. You'll never find me. Leaves clues to Octo. Everybody wants to be found, whether they like it or not, right? There's the, they always had to leave a little cookie, cookie crumble. Hey, I'm, I'm heading this way. I'm heading this way. So that's what it is, and that's what I believe it is. I mean, I could be wrong, but it's definitely not the uh, world between worlds. Is it going to be in Ahsoka? Maybe, but this isn't it. It's not. And we also see the New Republic in this. We see Mon Mothma. We see a few people from the Resistance, um, which is a TV show, a, a, a very kid-friendly TV show, like seven, um, the age of seven, five to seven years old. Uh, so we see some of those characters, which is cool. They're bringing, you know, everything's starting to come together. And uh, then we see Ahsoka, which is the weirdest thing. Well, we see Ahsoka fighting a Sith Inquisitor. Has the Sith armor, has the Sith Inquisitor lightsaber, but the time frame doesn't add up. The Empire is gone. Who's controlling? There's no more Vader. There's no more Emperor to command these Sith Inquisitors to hunt Jedi. So who's who's controlling them? Which is, is is weird. Um, and it looks like one of the Inquisitors. I, I get them all confused. There's so many, but I think it's the eighth brother. Uh, fought a Malachor against Maul and Ahsoka. Um, so I don't know where that one. In, I don't know how that comes into play. Maybe he's there to get revenge. Like, hey, you you left me on Malachor to die because I think he was the one that's kicked off, and then his uh, Sith helicopter. Uh, yeah, his lightsaber helicopter blows up and then he falls to his doom. So he could have easily survived and got another, uh, got another lightsaber for the duel. And now we're at the duel part. I, I posted this on Twitter. Is Ahsoka quickly becoming the best lightsaber, uh, duelist of her era of all time? Let's break this down. In the Clone Wars, she faces Grievous as, of course, in the Clone Wars, she was a Padawan, but she was a little Padawan. This is the beginning of the Clone Wars. She fights Grievous. She defends younglings against Grievous, right? It's the arc where the the younglings are trying to get their lightsabers from Elam, and then they're heading back to Coruscant. On the trip home, they have the little run-in with Grievous, and Ahsoka defends those Jedi the, the younglings from Grievous. And she does a good job. And then she fights Maul, defeats him, right? Something Qui-Gon Jinn couldn't do. Um, a Jedi master, by the way. Uh, Obi-Wan only beat him as a Padawan because he used the dark side uh, and Qui-Gon's death to kind of give him this uh, yes, I said dark side, right? Like we, we're, We'll get into that in another podcast. But Obi-Wan used hatred towards Maul to defeat him in that scenario. Uh, and Maul's in a, a phenomenal duelist. He was bred. Uh, Palpatine bred him to be this killer, right? So, and, Maul and, and Ahsoka defeated him. She also faces Vader and does a phenomenal job. She faces numerous Inquisitors throughout her lifetime and defeats them all. Um, and then now she's fighting these dark Jedi who Balin seems well-trained his hallway scene. Those lightsaber strikes are crispy. 
Those are perfect lightsaber strikes. You can see he's done this move a thousand times. He's he's Bruce Lee. All right, one million kicks. He's done one million uh, lightsaber throws. Right, and so I think Ahsoka is really up there with the best duelist. And of course, Anakin Skywalker was her was her master, her trainer. So it's only fitting that she takes that role. I would really it would never happen, but I, I would really like to see a. Um, of this era Luke face off against Ahsoka. I think Ahsoka would piece him up because if you know me, you know that a, a, a temple trained youngling that grows into a Jedi or a force user is always going to be better than the book reading um, Luke and Ray. So, uh, and this not, I'm not bashing Luke or Ray. I, 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 and we're going to get into the Ray talk here in a second. But uh, if you're, if you're trained like a little Spartan, from the very beginning of your lifetime, you're just naturally going to be better. And that's what Ahsoka was. She's been a Jedi through and through, right? She was, she was kidnapped by the Jedi order at a young age and then, th and then thrust into the clone Wars. So she has so much experience, right? Luke didn't, Luke didn't even know how to kill somebody until Obi-Wan Kenobi took him to the death star. And he was 18, right? Ahsoka was, Ahsoka was killing people at 11. 10. I don't know. She was young. Um, but I think that's enough of Ahsoka. There's really, it, it is what it is. It's a teaser trailer and it gave us, um, it gave us a lot. So, uh, Tales of the Jedi season two was announced. Nothing about it, except it will still be, uh, I believe it's still going to be in the Clone Wars era. So my picks, Yoda, Mace Windu, and Plo Koon. Those are the three that I want covered. And I want it to be as dark as it was with Dooku. So keep doing that, Dave Filoni, please. Um, unfortunately, un unfortunately, I haven't had time to do much of the Acolyte. I know there's a lot of Acolyte news out there. The only thing that I gathered so far is that Jonas will return as a, as a Wookiee uh, and he'll be a Jedi Wookiee. So uh, it's pretty cool. High, the High Republic era has uh, all types of Jedi, right? It's at the height of their their existence and there's there's wookie jedi which is really cool um i want to talk about the mandalorian the last episode and then we're going to hop into the new movies and then that'll be the podcast let me get another drink of aqua and uh, we'll do this um this is where i'm, I'm going to get a lot of feedback i i did not like this last episode I think it was my least favorite episode of all of the Mandalorian seasons. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you liked it, I'm glad you did. If you want to post in the comments, how dare you, Laura Seeker, do it. But I don't care. Uh, and I'm not going to hate on anybody that has uh, watched it and liked it. There were some good parts, yes. There were some fun parts, yes. But overall, it felt... And then people are right. People are right on this. It, it did feel like a Clone Wars cartoon episode, right? Kind of, kind of out there. I'm not really a comedic type uh, viewer. I don't, I don't watch com comedy movies. Um, I don't watch stand ups or anything. I enjoy them, but I don't go out of my way to. So when they try to throw comedy into Star Wars, me personally, I don't like it, which is fun. So this, the episode just wasn't for me. Now, there are parts that it was. And in those parts were uh, the ending. The ending. Even though I could tell that they were they were on the um, the volume, the set. Um, this It reminded me of Knights of the Republic with the Mandalorian Mercs. And that was pretty cool. And then Bo-Katan. Spoilers. Oh, man. I didn't even give out the spoiler tab. Sorry. Uh, Bo-Katan fights Axe Wolves. It is wolves, by the way. Everyone's calling them wolves, ex wolves, but they've changed it, I guess, to wolves, W O V E S. Let's just call him X. We're gonna call him the Axe Man. So the Axe Man and Bo Katan are fighting, and of course Bo Katan um, defeats him. And then he's he's uh, I don't know another word for it, and I hate using this word. Um, Axe is, is is like racist towards Din. I, I I don't know the, I don't know the word. Okay, I'm sorry. 
but he's he he's like Din doesn't even belong here. He's not even one of us. He wasn't born a Mandalorian. He he, he wears the armor, but he is not of our blood. And then Bogatan brings bring, brings it right back. She's like, well, we aren't either. We aren't either. The original Mandalorian are Tongs. They're an alien species. We're all humanoid. He has as much claim to the man the Mandalorian armor as we all do, right? He walks the way. This is the way. And she tries to explain it to him and, and Axe isn't having it. He holds the dark saber. You won't even take it from him. Basically calling Din the B word, right? And um And then Din was like, I'll just give it to her. Dude, I don't even want the dark saber. I want my spear back that I melted down for, for my little foundling Grogu. I want my spear back. I was so much better with it. I can't even hold the dark saber. It's heavy. And um, they all laugh at him. They're like, no, you can't have it back. Oh, but and then, then Din brings out, because Din is so well versed in the Mandalorian religion that he basically says, hey, I actually lost the dark saber. Bo-Katan defeated the one who beat me. So she has claim to it. And Axe, the Axe Man, <laughs> agrees to this. And the rest of uh, the Mandalorian mercenaries agree as well. She gets the Darksaber. And then again, for round two of her with the Darksaber, if you watch the Clone Wars, this is the second time she's had it. But it was also given to her in the Clone Wars. But this time, I'm guessing, if you're listening at home, I'm using quotation marks. I'm guessing this time is acceptable. And that's a good thing because <clears throat> Bo-Katan has been in the trenches since the very beginning. She was a part of the Clone Wars. She was, um, she's been all, her life's mission has been to unite Mandalore and lead Mandalore to greatness. And she's so close. Again, I'm calling her Bo-Katan the Uniter. When she, you know, and, and by the way, I have another video out there. The Darksaber has replaced the Mandalorian armor in, in Legends. So if you didn't know that, like, like where, where's the armor? That that's It's the Darksaber now. So now she has the Darksaber. She has witnessed, seen the Mythosaur. Only the armorer knows about this. And she now has a group of, uh, of Mandalorian mercenaries. And she's about to join them with uh, the Children of the Watch in the Armorer's group. But I think the Armorer might have a, another plan. I don't know what it is yet. I still feel like she's a villain, man, every time. But if they do unite, and then they're going to attack Mandalore, and Moff Gideon's um, fleet is not going going to allow this. They're already in the Mandalorian system uh, because they attacked Bo-Katan's castle on her homeworld. And they're going to fight the Empire, right? The little segment of this Empire, not not Thrawn's uh, fleet, okay? And I'm going to break that down too. We're at 23 minutes. I'm going to try to cut this off at 30. We'll see. We might go longer. Who knows? Because uh, we have a lot to cover. Um, <clears throat> but they're good. So they're bringing, they're coming into play, the Mandalorians. And the New Republic in the Mandalorian is also coming into play. A Delphine squadron, and which has Zeb, right? And then Ahsoka's looking for Thrawn. So they're going to try to take back Mandalore. Will they get Mandalore? I don't know. Maybe that's for season four. But if you didn't know, there's three new movies announced. The Dawn of the Jedi movie, which we're not, I'm not going to cover that today. Um... The New Republic movie, which Dave Filoni is going to produce or direct. And the New Jedi Order uh, with Ray Skywalker. We're going to cover that one last. But <clears throat> again, on the last podcast, um, I explained how all of it's going to gonna come together. The Mandalorian episodes, Book of Boba, the Ahsoka TV show. They're, 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 it's I hate using Marvel uh, code words, but it is exactly, they're following it to the T. The end game, right? The Infinity Saga, the Infinity War, in war, in game, is what Dave Filoni's movie is going to be. Where Thrawn is, Thrawn is going to be the villain, and you're going to have Moff Gideon's group pair up with Thrawn's Seventh Fleet, and that's going to connect the Remnant Empire, right? And there might even be more. 
There might even be other warlords out there. And then you're going to pair the New Republic up with the Mandalorians um, and also Luke Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano. And I'm here for that. That, that That's going to be the movie. P- picture that in your head, guys. Guys and girls. A movie where the final battle... Because we normally have three Star Wars movies. But if you have four seasons of The Mandalorian, one or two seasons of Ahsoka, The Book of Boba Fett, probably season two before this movie comes out, you're going to have all that buildup. You can get right into the, the climax in this movie. You, you do the first hour to build up, and the last 90 minutes is the action. And in this action, on one side, you have Bo-Katan, Din Djarin, Grogu. Then you have uh, you have House Vizsla. You have the armorer. So we have the heavy hitters right there. Then you have the ghost crew from Rebels. You have Ahsoka. You have Luke Skywalker. Luke freaking Skywalker. I mean, come on. How cool is that? And on the other side, you have Thrawn, Moff Gideon, the Dark Jedi, right? This is where I'm getting into. Ahsoka can't Ahsoka can't fight all the Inquisitors. She can't fight all the Dark Jedi. She can't do it herself. She needs other Force users. Well, uh, Lore Seeker, what Force users are out there right now except for Ahsoka, Little Grogu, and Luke? People know how to use the Force. They just don't have the guidance. Because the Jedi Order has been gone. The Sith have been gone. There's no one to guide them. Well, guess what? That's how Kyle Katarn exists, right? Cal Kessis is still out there. Maybe. We haven't played the game yet. But like Cal Katarn, he's an adult. He's located by Luke at an, at an old age, way older than Anakin ever was. He's like in his 20s. Kip Duron. They, these are all old guys. I was like, yeah, I can use it. I didn't know really what it was. I can levitate things. I can see things before they happen. I got quick reflexes. You can train me. I'm a grown-ass man. So Luke's going to have, I would say, three to four Jedi with him. And they're going to lead an assault on what do you think? What do you think? Where do you think the final battle is going to be? Mount Tannis. From the Bad Batch. I mean, come on. It's all coming together. You've seen the clones in Mandalorian, right? You've seen the clone, vo- the, the, the vats, the back to tank looking things, right? You've seen them in season one. Then you have Thrawn and Mount Tannis from Bad Batch. That's where the final battle is going to be. And then guess what? The heir to the Empire books. Where does it take place? Mount Tannis. There's Dark Jedi on Mount Tannis. I also made a YouTube video about this. This is the this is the craziest thing. You you would think that I make all this content for nothing. Oh, <laughs> so that's where the final battle is going to be. So you have Mandalorian forces attacking Mount Tannis against. So you have Mandalorians versus stormtroopers, right? How who doesn't want to see that? Because they need revenge for destroying Mandalore. They want their best car back. They're going to go at them. Like you, like the Mandalorian Wars, like like Revan, Malak, all all those guys. That's what they're. It's gonna be like. See, if you wanted a Mandalorian Wars in your head, this is gonna be it. Meanwhile, Tie Fighters are in the sky, and the Ghost Crew is leading a Delphi Squadron in a space battle above. Right? Picture that. Okay. Then you have the Dark Jedi. Versus Luke's new Jedi Order, right? His, his 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 order that he's making. So we have lightsaber fights. Then Luke is gonna face a a clone of himself, right? If you didn't know, that's in Legends too. I'm 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 going on a tangent here. So Luke is now so in this movie that Dave Filoni is gonna produce, we have Luke versus Luke, right? Two U's, and they're fighting. Dark Jedi are fighting Luke's Jedi. Ghost crew up ahead fighting TIE fighters. Mandalorians fighting stormtroopers. And then Ahsoka is moving in on Thrawn. And guess who's there? Do you know? Oh, you do. Okay, I'll tell you. I'm going to spoil it for you. A dark 
Ezra Bridger, bro. <laughs> and Ahsoka has to face down Ezra Bridger, the guardian of Mount Tannis. That's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. And if you can't get behind that, if you're gonna, if you, if you're gonna be a negative Nancy on Twitter and say Disney Star Wars is, is lame, and you're a shill, and you can't get excited for that, what I just described to you, because that's basically what's gonna happen. It, it doesn't take a genius to predict what's gonna happen. We all knew Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America are gonna fight Thanos, right? We all knew that. It's pretty simple to see that Ahsoka, Luke. Dinjar and Bo Katan, the armorer, all these people are going to get going to go against Moff Gideon. And who do you think Din's going to be fighting in this uh this battle? Moff Gideon. Right? Meanwhile, Bo Katan's just slaughtering stormtroopers with the Darksaber. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna look visually. Your your eyes are never gonna be able to see Star Wars better than that, right? Visually, it's gonna be the most insane thing. And I'm I'm all for it. I can't wait. And that's how we're going to end that segment. And I'm going to I'm gonna clip all that. And we're going to put that in little videos. Uh, but, I mean. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, the last thing we're going to talk about. We're going we're gonna to cover this. We're at 31 minutes. Well, we'll just cover it. We'll see what happens. The, the last thing we'll cover. The new Jedi Order movie. With Rey Skywalker as the helm. This is awesome. If you didn't like the sequel trilogy, give this one a go. Why not? It's more Star Wars. It's it's continuing the story and maybe it improves the story for you, right? I for one like Rey. I think she's a good character. Uh she she's a very good character for uh the new fans of Star Wars, the children of Star Wars. When I went to watch when I watched the Phantom Menace, I was eight years old and, 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 and if a 40 year old or 30 year old or 40 year old, and I was so excited, man, I, I live in, I live in Kentucky and there was no Darth Maul action figures anywhere. Everybody loved Darth Maul. He was the coolest character. My uncle lived in California. He found one at Toys R Us and he mailed it to me. Now imagine I get the Darth Maul character and then someone who 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 loves the original trilogy and he hates the prequels was like Darth Maul's stupid kid. Like, what would I like? How how would I feel? You know what I mean? Like, come on. So, Ray, Ray she's not my favorite character. She's not even in my top twenty. She's not bad. And say same with Finn. So. This is good for her. This is good for Star Wars. It's good for the fans. It's good for the kiddos, man. This is what Star Wars is all about. Just bringing in a family. So Ray Skywalker, I'm going to make so much content on it. You're, if you don't like Disney era stuff or, or sequel trilogy, you're, you, I expect you to be in my comments. Just feel the ag algorithm for me. Thank you. But <clears throat> let's break this one down. It's 15 years after the rise of Skywalker. So the First Order is gone. The Jedi are still far and few between, and Rey is trying to rebuild her new Jedi Order. People forget that Luke tried to rebuild his order too. This is the second one. So this is Rey's new Jedi Order, and she's using the books that she recovered from Octo. Now, I don't think this is going to be a single movie, because there would be a lot of information to give you in a two and a half hour segment, right? I'm sorry, my dogs are barking. Um, I have two German shepherds. I can't control them. They're 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 like two wookies in a in a cantina ripping uh, arms out of sockets. Um. So I lost my train of, train of thought. Oh, give me a second. It's gonna come back. Uh, so she's starting her new Jedi Order. Ray is, and. How can you do this in two hours and 20 minutes? Are we going to have an antagonist? Is it going to be like, uh, is she just build the order? And then at the end, we have Jedi Knights training. I don't think you need an antagonist, but I really think it's going to be a, and this is going to be the next trilogy that they do. And I think Filoni's and the Dawn of the Jedi is going to be a standalone movie. So 
what would I like to see? Well, Finn, please, as a Jedi, a, a pupil of hers, bring in other characters. Uh, if you don't introduce like Cal Katarn type characters in the Mandalorian or Dave Filoni's film, you can bring him in now as, as, as a, a user of this era. Uh, I want to see a little dude over here, Grogu, uh, grown up. He would be what in his nineties or so third, what 30, 25. No, he'd be 75. He'd be like 70 or 80 years old. So should be able to easily talk and, and, and be trained. And I would personally like to see them face off against a non force, a non Sith group. Like, why does it always have to be the Sith? So in legends, um, when princess Leia and Han Solo got married, they had many kids, not just Ben Solo and, and Canon. They had Jason and Diana Solo and they had Anakin Solo and Luke Skywalker had Ben Skywalker with marriage aid. And those four became part of Luke's new Jedi order. And the main antagonist in that era was not a force user. It was a alien race that was immune to force techniques. So picture that you're a Jedi, you know how to force push. You can, you can do all types of tricks and, and doodads, but if you can't use it against the enemy, then you just have to face them in lightsaber combat. They're just normal people, right? So you, so they, they make the Jedi absolute, right? It, it, you know, who's, who's the better duelist at this point? And there's a huge epic climax to this story. It's like it's like 16 books, right? And it's the New Jedi Order uh, series. You should really you should really read it if you have time. But you would need like three to four months of just straight up reading to cover it all. And there's a lot of death. There's a lot of good stories in it, man. There's, I mean, I guess it's not a spoiler. Uh, if you are gonna read. Uh, go, skip this part. Just don't even watch the rest of this uh, podcast. But Anakin Skywalker, or yeah, a Anakin Anakin Solo. I, I was saying Skywalker earlier. I'm stupid. I'm sorry. Um, so Jason and Diana Solo and Anakin Solo, and then Ben Skywalker. Sorry about that. Um, again, I, I freestyle. I'm freestyling this. I don't, I'm not using any notes. So Anakin Solo sacrifices himself to save his. Um, siblings jason and Diana, uh in a yuzhan vong attack they they ambushed them they, they 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 tricked them into coming to this area and anakin became uh part of oneness right where he just becomes unstoppable and he's slaughtering yuzhan vong warriors left and right and eventually and he, he allows his siblings in the other parts of the team to get away and then he becomes one with the force and this sends jason down the path of the dark side unfortunately but there's more to it a lot more to it actually and we are going to make a video on jason solo eventually um the philosopher dark lord and and, and then there's that story and then jason faces mara jade down the road uh luke jason and giant Diana, um go on to face the basically the king of the Yuzhan Vong. I forget his name at, at the it, it slips in my mind at this time. But it's 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 a crazy story. And imagine Ray leading the new Republic forces and her new Jedi Order against the Yuzhan Vong. Because now her force powers, which everybody hates, are not gonna work. They don't they're not gonna work against these people. So she's gonna have to lead with her mind and her skills with a lightsaber. Count Dooku quote. And her new Jedi Order will be tested. And I think that that would be the, the best story for her. Because if you give her loss. And then you watch her come back from it. Which is what I guess people have the problems with in the sequel trilogy. Well, she's she automatically. I'm sorry. <clears throat> she was automatically powerful. She never had any type of uh, dilemmas or she never had any type of like a hero's journey, which is completely wrong. But that's what people's main gripe is. Like she never had any type of problems handling um, her business. 
we'll, we'll make it blatant this time. Make the first movie so like she gets beaten so bad where you're just like, how did she come back in episode two? Right. And just have her build up. Ray strikes back. Return of the Ray is going to be the third movie. How about that? Um, but I'm excited for it and I'm here for all of it. And uh, Dave, if I spoiled your movie because uh, of my Star Wars genius, I'm sorry. Uh, you can just send me a, a massive check in the mail and I'll delete this episode. Uh, but if not, I'm going to post it everywhere and I will destroy you. Um, guys, we're, we'll, we'll watch the next two episodes of The Mandalorian and we're going to be covering it. Well, I don't know why I said two. We'll watch the episode next week. We'll have another episode three next week. I'm going to cover the Bad Batch a little bit as well. I know we didn't get into that this time. And then we'll, we'll cover the season finale of Mandalorian. And then we'll get right into other content and do, keep doing these weekly when I can. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. If you made it this far, we're 40 minutes in. You're a real one. You're 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 a real lore seeker. You're down in the lower levels with me. You're down in the trenches, and I appreciate all everything that you do. Um, please, 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 please watch, like, and comment on the YouTube videos. It really helps grow. I'm working hard. I'm trying to get content out daily for you. If I don't get a video out, trust me, believe me, it's because I had something else I just couldn't avoid. Right, so. I try to get something out every single day. Um, may the force be with you. Always.